Yo, so story time with your boy, Professor Ill Will. Check me out. I want to tell you guys about this time that a younger, dumber version of myself ended up in jail. So, they pulled me out the car. Pulled me over, man. Pulled me out the car, threw me in handcuffs, and I was on my way to jail, man. And it's like, you can wake up just how you are today. You know, you got your nice Nikes on your feet. You got your hat. When you go to jail, none of that matters. You know, they don't care. That stuff is just like, whatever, bro. Complete violation, you know. And it's just so, so bad, man. It's horrible. So, threw me in the handcuffs. I go to jail. In the holding cell. I'm worried. I'm scared. I'm not a gangster, bro. You know, I can play one. And I've been in the hood. But I'm not. You know, and some of these guys, they were... They, they were gangsters, bro. And that's just not me, man. I learned that in there, you know. So, <clears throat> you know, you get in there, man, and you just on lockdown, bro. Kind of like how it is like right now, but not nearly as worse. You know, right now we're at home. You you you, you forget to take the just, uh, you learn to take the just normalist things for granted as of right now. Like, for instance, you can go... I can turn the light off right now if I want, you know, and when it's time to go to sleep or whatever, I can turn the light off. In jail, you can't do that. You know, you can sleep to a certain time whenever you want to wake up in jail, they're going to wake you up. Your clothes, it's somebody else's clothes, the jumpsuit, and it's been worn before. It's not like your nice, clean clothes that you wear at home, you know, and... It just sucks, man. Everything sucks. The food is horrible, but you have to eat it. You just get hungry after a while and it just starts tasting normal. But it's just bland, horrible food. Oatmeal, like just oatmeal, no salt, no sugar, just oatmeal, uh, a slice of toast, butter, jelly. That's it. Apple, you know. And, man, it's just, it's just horrible. But... <clears throat> Even as I was in this place that was so horrible, I learned to make the best of it. You know, I started investing. I started just kind of like, man, I started thinking about what do, what did I deserve to do? What did I do to deserve to get here? You know, and I had to kind of challenge my own thought and just my wickedness. What was it that brought me here? You know, I started to learn my lesson and I really just started to delve into just like books, you know, like uh, magazines and stuff, they have like uh, recipes. I would start learning these recipes. Probably why, one of the reasons why I like to cook right now is just because while I was in there, I would just look at these recipes like, man, when I get out, I'm going to cook this recipe, going to try this, you know. Uh, I remember I would read these cowboy books. Cowboy book is, and like, now I know, I figured out that yo soy un cabonero because I was in the slammer reading these cowboy books and the cowboy books would just be so uh kind of take you to a different world and 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 the time would go by so much faster you know because when you're in jail it's just time just goes by so slow and it's just like at first i was just crushed like man like i'm here it's horrible but after a while i started being like well i'm here Let, what can i do while i'm here you know to make my time well worth it because i figured out that while i was in this isolation they just wanted to take my time. They just wanted me to feel like I had gotten punished, get your punishment. They were taking your time from you. You can't go out and be in the in the world of the citizens because you don't want to follow the rules. So I said, hey, I'm going to make up for it then. While I'm here, you guys are not going to take away my time. So I'm going to invest. I'm going to read. I'm going to learn. And uh, just... <clears throat> just learning and going through that process, you know, and I came across one of these books, you know, the little li library guy, he would come by with a cart and you could pick off a book every few days or something, you know, so you had to get your, uh, get to that cart and exchange the books, but uh, one time he came by and I grabbed the book, it was called, I saw this book, it was called The Ten Commandments of Success. And I was like, what? The Ten Commandments of Success? Like, I'll check this out. What is this? So I started reading it. And, you know, in jail is kind of interesting. You're in there and there's other people who have done 
far worse things than what I've done, you know. But criminals, man. But it's, it's, people have their own stories, so just kind of hearing everyone's story, you know. Some people are crazy, crazy. Some people are kind of like you. Some people are, you know, whatever the case may be. Book and, uh, I remember there was a fight, man. That guy, they were in the other part. I didn't see it, but I heard it. I was in the other, they were in the other room or whatever. And they were playing the cards or whatever and got mad and stood up and dude hit him with the combo, boom, boom, or something. And then the guy, he hit his head on the post. He knocked him out and he hit his head on the, on the bed post. And there was like blood everywhere. It was gross, man. And they were like, the guy got up, he was just bleeding. And then they took the other guy who knocked him out and he probably had to go do more time or whatever, man. But it was just crazy, you know, crazy experience. And then it's just so gross, you know, you're in there and you're in sandals and stuff and they don't even care. They clean it up, but you know, there's still blood down there. It's gross, man. But, <clears throat> and, but yeah, it was just like, man, people were, so I would just keep to myself, man. I would just keep to myself, you know? And in this book, I learned the 10 commandments of success by OG Medino. OG Medino, the OG, he taught me, man, while I was in there. I found this book, The Ten Commandments of Success, and it kind of sparked my attention just because, you know, growing up, religious background and whatnot, you hear the Ten Commandments. Well, what are the Ten Commandments of Success, you know? So I was like, yeah, I'll check it out. So the Ten Commandments right here, the first commandment of success. Check me out. You must labor each day as if your life, as if they say it like this, you must labor each day as if thy life hung in the balance, you know? So that just means, man, just you gotta labor, man. Jesus probably was a laborer, probably was a hard work, he probably wasn't lazy, you know? So just in the context of your life, your life is just so finite in your time, in your hundred years that you do on this grand scheme of things in the universe and you know, while you're here, how how hard did you go, man? How hard did you labor? You know, did you labor while your while your time was here? Did you give back? Did you, you know, whatever it is, you know, that you're working for, or you're dreaming about and scheming about, and you're, what are you working for? You know, did you do it? Did you, were you persistent and and work for your craft, or were you just kind of relaxing here and there, work at a little bit? get kind of lazy you know so whatever that is man you know labor as if it's really important because the small choices that you do have to make those small choices add up you know and it compounds you know you save a penny a day you're saving your money it's gonna stack up you know you're eating cheeseburgers consistently not working out you're gonna probably have a heart attack or something you know that's just how it works things compound over time so your hard work labor your whole life and it's gonna be amazing, you know, that's what I figured out. So, that's number one, labor, as if your life hung in the balance. So number two, thou must learn that with patience, ye can control thy destiny. You know, there's a proverb, or just a quote I had heard, it goes like, patience is a virtue of the gods who have no time, you know, and you gotta think about that, like, man, the creators of time, they don't even worry about time because they have no time there, the gods. So if you can put yourself in that mindset of to be so patient and you can control, you'll have that control over your life, you know, just to have that patience, you know. You got to think about it like on the freeway, the young dude, he's got the Corvette, he's going fast. And then you got the dude who's just chilling, just chilling, just cruising, doing the speed limit. And the dude, he's got the fast car, he's taking off, like, oh, yeah, I'm going to beat you, I'm going to beat you. He's going faster, going faster, and the guy, he's just chilling. And the next thing you know, the guy, he's just chilling, there's an accident. The car, the Corvette crashed, because he's just going too fast, you know. Haste makes waste, so that's what is important, you know. If, if I would have learned this to have patience, I probably wouldn't have been in my speeding ticket, uh coincidence in the first place you know just following the rules and just playing it safe and being patient you know so number three thou must chart thy course with care or ye 
will just forever or yay kanye no or ye will just forever so that just means man like you got to know where you're going you know i like to stick to my schedule you know i'm a man of calendar and i like to look at the can calendar i like to put things on my calendar so i know what i'm doing how these things are going to add up to the overall goal that i want to get to you know where's my where's the the path that i'm taking daily taking me overall you know if you got the map to chicago if you don't if you're trying to get to chicago but you don't have a map and you're going towards new york you're not going to get to chicago you know so just take your time take it doesn't matter how fast you're going but it matters that you know where you're going you know and that's just just to relate man i know a lot of people are just grinding out grinding out and you just want to get to your goal just know where what do you have to do to get there are you doing that daily and you'll be on the right track but if you don't know if you just wake up people are calling you you go outside people are friends hey you gotta go here you gotta go there by the end of the day you're busy but you're not getting closer to your overall goal you know so that's just important man to know where it is that you're going have a map have the course set out and just make your day and do what you know that you need to do every day or whatever all right so yeah number four thou must prepare for darkness while traveling in the sunlight so that just means while you're in the sunlight prepare for the darkness right now we're in a time of darkness things are bleak you know the virus and all this type of nonsense and things are dark you know but not to worry because this will pass and soon the sun will come out soon it will be summertime you know and the same thing applies you can think it about it in reverse you know while it's summertime soon it's going to be summertime it's also going to be winter time so did you prepare and did you build your shelter for the winter during the summer are you ready are you prepared for the darkness you know <clears throat> even though it is dark right now you can always get better when i was in the slammer it was dark you know but i knew that it would be over soon i knew that i would get out you know so <clears throat> prepare uh, number five, thou must smile in the face of adversity until it surrenders. A little smile. Smile at your haters, man. Whatever it is, you know. And, and just the hard stuff, you know. Sometimes you'll get into those awkward positions, awkward uh, situations or whatever it is, or uncomfortable situations, you know. Smile through it, you know. I like to work out. When it gets going tough, I like to crack a smile. It makes me focus, takes me off the pain immediately and i understand that i'm facing a challenge i want to face a challenge that's why i like to smile smile in the face of adversity until it surrenders you know uh <clears throat> and that just goes to like you know while you might be in some bullshit you can smile through it you know i'm in the jail as i'm reading this and i'm like man i can smile smile through it you want to smile through the pain man you know because you're going to get over it's going to be you're going to be happy. Be, be happy now so you'll be happy later. Or whatever, you know. So, <clears throat> number six. Thou must realize that plans are only dreams without action. You know, your dreams take work. Your dreams don't work unless you do. It's my favorite Snapchat filter. Your dreams don't work unless you do. So, that just means, you know, a lot of us are dreaming. A lot of us are scheming. Like, man, I wish I had this. I wish I had that. It's cool to have that that you want, but what can you do to get there? Because you can actually take the smallest steps to get there and making your dreams come true just by taking action. Take massive action on your goals, you know. Take those actions, and you're going to get there. You're going to get close to it. Thou, number seven, thou must sweep the cobwebs from thy mind before they imprison thee. Sweep the cobwebs from your mind before they imprison you. A lot of us, we, we think back to those bad situations in the past. Even me right now I can be like, man, I went to jail. Like, this sucks. And like, you know, but I spin that narrative <coughs> and I sweep it. I say, yeah, it happened. It's behind me now, though. So I'm not going to worry about it anymore. You know, I'm not going to be like, man, I should have done this or I should have done that. Because that is taking energy. It's taking 
you know, it takes it takes energy to worry about something. If you're constantly worrying about something behind you, you never see what's in front of you that you need to be. You can be spending that same energy to be prepared, prepare yourself for, you know, so clear your mind from all those bad things, all the negative thoughts so that you can focus on what's happening right in front of you right now and the and use that full energy <clears throat> that you have at the time, you know, if you're worrying about something else, you're going to be off, you know, I'm in the game, Michael Jordan, I'm thinking about something at home, some drama at home or something, I'm going to be out of the game, I'm not going to be ready to score, I'm not going to win, you know, so you got to clear your mind so that you can be present, you know, you can't have all that past stuff, leave all the stuff behind, all that baggage, leave it behind you, you know, <clears throat> eight, Thou must lighten thy load if ye would reach thy destination. So you're in the desert. It's hot. You know, you got the big rucksack. You got all this stuff in your backpack. And you're trying to get to the different location. And, you're, and it's struggling. It's heavy. You know, you got to drop some of that stuff, you know. <clears throat> I remember this hit me really one time in a scripture because I had went to church and... At the time, I was kind of going through stuff. I had some family issues, and I had uh, the full-time job, and I was going to school part-time, and I had the <coughs> the girlfriend, kind of like weird, relate, not a really a good relationship that I was in, and I'm just trying to carry all the stuff, you know, trying to help the girlfriend do their stuff, trying to help my family out, trying to make sure I still work my job, trying to still do this college homework stuff, and it was just so much stuff on my back, you know, so much burden I had to carry, you know, and I had heard that and I was like, man, I kind of look back at this like, yeah, you're right. I need to lighten my load. I need to lighten the, the weight that I'm carrying so that I can reach my destination because if not, I'm just going to like carry it. I'm just going to pass out. I'm not going to be able to reach it, you know, or if I do, it's going to be really slow and painful, you know, so lighten your load, lighten Whatever, if you're carrying on so much responsibilities, you know, lighten that. You shouldn't have to carry all that. You know, focus your energy on what you need to focus on. You know, let go of those bad relationships. Let go of those, um, <clears throat> the negativity, whatever it is that's slowing you down. Stay away from it, you know, and and just take some of that, that burden off you so that you can reach your goal. Okay. Number nine, thou must never forget that it is always later than you think, you know? So even like right now in a situation like this, <clears throat> what if you can make your mind say, the coronavirus is already over with, this is already over with, you know, this stuff that we're going through or whatever situation, you know, like say you're wanting to get shredded. You gotta think about it like that too. The bad times, it's already too. It's already later than what it seems, and for the good times, it's already later. So, like summertime, you want to be shredded by summertime. You got four months to be shredded. You know, <clears throat> are you shredded right now? Are you thinking and are you applying the habits of the shredded person would right now to be shredded in the winter time because it's already or in the summertime? It's already summertime. You know, it's already, the time has already passed, you know. Uh, one thing I look at, and it's kind of weird to think about, is like the stars. If you look out at the stars outside in the night sky, the stars are already, majority of them are already burnt out. Like I heard the sun is already burnt out. But just because of how far away it is, and these the light takes millions of years to even reach the earth, or something crazy like that, so... By the time you're seeing, when you're looking at the star, it's already burnt out, you know, in the grand scheme of things. So that's just kind of a tricky, trippy thing to think about. It's already later than what it seems, you know, possibly like if your life, your life has already passed, you know, or whatever. That's kind of weird if you think of, don't go too far, but <clears throat> think about the things that are relevant, you know, the coronavirus already gone, you know, you know, what did you do during that time or, you know. <clears throat> stuff like that so okay number 10 the last of the 10 commandments of success number 10 thou must never strive to be anything but thyself so that just means be you man whatever it is your uniqueness the ways that you are different from other people 
it's all you, you know, the creator, he made you, and you're the only version of that, you know, <clears throat> so <clears throat> just be that uh, same version of yourself. It's easy to look at a successful personality and try to duplicate, but you'll just be a copy, you know, and you'll never be as great as that personality was because they were being themselves, so don't try to be a copy, just be yourself. That's the most important thing. Most important thing is to be yourself. Health is wealth. I hope you guys like my <clears throat> my story, you know. And uh, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, follow me on TikTok. And yo, you know, new wave coaching. You can't change the waves. The surfers don't change the waves. They learn to surf. So learn to surf. Stay safe, stay healthy. New wave coaching. Ill will, Professor Ill will. Thank you guys. <laughs>